Babies use them. Children use them too. So do women and men. Bathroom scales are a part of everyday life in Japan. A relentless quest for ever more accurate weight measurements was behind a shift from analog scales with springs and needles to digital scales. But today's scales measure more than just weight. They can collect information on various aspects of your health. Thanks to dogged data gathering efforts by researchers, these high-tech scales can quickly measure body fat percentage or basal metabolic rate. Meanwhile, research is now underway into making accurate body weight measurements in space. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is bathroom scales, and we'll take the measure of how Japanese lifestyles and ideas about health have changed over the years. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. I'm in the bathroom scale section of a large appliance store and I can't believe the number of different kinds of scales they have. Look at this, it's like a bar of chocolate. What's this number? I think it's trying to guess my height or something. Anyway, that's a kind of bathroom scale as well. They even have a speaking scale. This one's designed for the elderly and those with poor eyesight and something even more state-of-the-art. Take out my smartphone, push this button here and... Bingo! It updates your readout from the last time you used it. All right, let's take a closer look at some of these high-tech bathroom scales now. What can the latest bathroom scales tell you about your body? First, your weight. your body fat percentage and your visceral fat. This is the amount of fat around your organs and it's strongly linked with many lifestyle related diseases. Next, basal metabolic rate or BMR. It's the amount of energy your body expends on a daily basis. Body age, estimated from your body composition and BMR. This serves as an indication of your overall physical health. Mariko Fukushima works in an office in Tokyo. She's using a state-of-the-art scale to help her lose weight. She weighs herself at the same time each day. Then she connects the scale to her computer. The data is sent over the internet to the servers of the company that makes the scale. The uploaded data is shown as a graph, allowing Fukushima to keep track of her everyday weight fluctuations. The graph makes it more difficult to stop. I can see how things were a month ago, and I can see at a glance how much weight I've lost. That motivates me to keep going. She carefully inputs her meals and the amount she's exercised. For example, the day before yesterday, I really pigged out. Yesterday, I worked out hard. And today, I worked out hard. I make notes of all that. Then, this information is overlaid on the graph. So, if I'm looking to see why my weight bounced around, why I suddenly jumped up a kilogram, I can see that by looking at the entry I made that day. If you eat too much, then go for a jog. Seeing the daily fluctuation in her weight motivates Fukushima to exercise. As soon as she finishes jogging, she pulls out a pedometer. When this is connected to the internet, it logs the number of steps taken and calories burned next to the weight data. It's like a personal trainer. It keeps me on the right track. Her scale is such an important part of her daily routine that it's more than a machine. It's a partner. There are bathroom scales that weigh more than just people. 
some can weigh pets as well. Here is one. First, the owner weighs himself, 75 kilograms. Next, he picks up his pet and steps on the scale. It then calculates just the weight of the pet. Pets often get overweight because their owners pamper them. These days, many owners watch their pets' weight as closely as they watch their own. Some Japanese take their love of scales to an extreme. Here's one such person. Here it is. I carry this around with me. Megumi Tanaka works in an office in Tokyo, and she actually does carry a scale around with her. Today, she's dining out with friends. She wants to avoid eating or drinking too much. But the scale is also a great topic of conversation. It measures your weight and helps you to talk to people. <laughs> it would seem that for some in Japan, the bathroom scale is even a form of entertainment. I'm in a public bath in Tokyo. There are clothes today, which is just as well because this is the women's changing room. Now, I am here for a reason, and that's because they have a very old scale. It was installed in 1956, and it's still in use. And it's here behind this door. Now, this is a little bit heavy, so you're going to have to bring it with me for a moment. And the reason it's in here is because ladies don't like other people knowing how much they weigh, and I totally understand the way they feel. Now, this scale has two different units of measurement. It's got kan, which are the traditional Japanese units, which amount to 3.75 kilograms on the inside and kilograms on the outside. So here goes. Let's see, I weigh just under 19 kan. Shall we just leave it at that and go back and look at the history of how scales came to be used in Japanese daily life? Japan is poor in natural resources. It has always been important to measure things precisely in order to avoid waste. In samurai times, accurate scales were made by artisans who specialized in fine work, like comb makers and engravers. This is the oldest Japanese bathroom scale still in existence, made in the 1880s. It's a marvel of craftsmanship, a distillation of the exceptional skills found in pre-modern Japan. Let's see it in action. It's called a platform scale. Weights are added individually until they balance the weight of whoever is standing on it. When the scales are perfectly balanced, the measurement is taken. The total of the weights is added to the value on the balance scale. 13 kan, 700 monme. That is 51.375 kilograms. Now let's weigh the same woman on a state-of-the-art scale. 51.2 kilograms. The old scale was off by just 0.3%. In the 19th century, scales of this precision were only found in military complexes, schools and other special facilities. By the 1920s, public baths were starting to install scales. This made it possible for people to weigh themselves more easily than ever before. But there was still a long way to go before bathroom scales would become common in the home. A breakthrough came after the Second World War. In the late 1950s, one Japanese manufacturer set out to develop scales for use at home. Food shortages were still fresh in the Japanese memory, but bathroom scales were already an established feature of American homes, where they were seen as a tool to support good health. So the manufacturer saw bathroom scales as the wave of the future. This home scale went on sale in 1959. It cost 2,800 yen, 
Back then, the starting wage for someone straight out of university was about 10,000 yen a month. So it was too expensive for the average Japanese and it didn't sell well. But by the 1960s, the scene was set for a bathroom scale revolution. First of all, living conditions had improved. Household bathtubs were becoming standard and so there was less need to go to a public bath. And Japan was in the middle of a shift to a more Western diet. With plenty of food now available, anxiety spread about overeating and getting fat. There was also a change in the way fashion was perceived. In 1967, the English model Twiggy visited Japan. Styles emphasizing sharp body lines came into vogue. Japanese women started worrying about body shape and began to watch their weight very carefully. Helped by these changes in society, bathroom scales flooded into Japanese homes. To meet consumer demand for more compact and accurate scales, in the 1970s, manufacturers turned to digital technology. Conventional analog scales, which use springs, had an accuracy limit of around 500 grams. But digital scales use sensors to measure the bending of metal inside the scale and convert that bending into an electronic signal displayed on a screen. This method led to the creation of scales that were more and more accurate. The biggest drawback was cost. So manufacturers focused on minimizing the number of parts and rapid advancement in computer technologies helped them to do just that. In 1990, Japanese home bathroom scales finally reached the 50 gram accuracy milestone. They were more accurate than any other bathroom scales in the world. Let's see exactly how accurate that is. This model's weight is 46.25 kilograms. Here is 50 grams of water. She drinks it. She then steps back on the scale. What will it measure her weight as now? 46.30 kilograms, exactly 50 grams more than before. With their ever-improving accuracy, these devices scale new heights of importance in everyday Japanese life. This restaurant is in an underground shopping mall right near Tokyo Station. The company that runs it makes bathroom scales, and because of that, they're very keen for their employees to eat healthily. And in their company cafeteria, they serve balanced, healthy meals with low salt and calories, but tasty and filling. And the recipes that they were serving there started to create a kind of buzz, and that led to the creation of this restaurant. So, um, they have two choices, and one is a daily special, one's a weekly special. We're going to try the daily one today. Okay. Well, here it is. It's a healthy, balanced meal. Looks a little bit like the sort of meal that a Buddhist monk might eat to me. At this restaurant, they don't have any condiments on the table, as you'll see. What they do have is this, which is a scale. And then you put your rice on the scale, and it will tell you that you have 94 grams. And then you press this button, it tells you how many kilocalories, 158. And this whole meal comes in at a little under 500 kilocalories. So if you ate this every day, you would certainly not have to worry about your weight. The other thing you have to do here is you take this little kitchen timer and you switch it on, and you're supposed to spend 20 minutes eating your meal, which means that you eat really slowly. So you eat slowly, you have to chew a lot, and of course this is good for your health as well. So, while I make an effort to spend 20 minutes doing this, take a look at some of Japan's multifunctional bathroom scales and how they were developed. Once bathroom scales could weigh a person to within 50 grams, 
there seemed to be little point in pursuing accuracy any further. At around that time, the president of a scale-making company heard something interesting from a doctor. Being obese was not about total body weight, it seemed, but about the amount of body fat a person had. This idea was drawing attention in the world of medicine. If two people had the same body weight, the person with the higher body fat percentage seemed to be at greater risk of disease. So this scale company set out to develop a new scale, one that would measure body fat. Tommy Ostato, who had just joined the company, was assigned to the task. He began by reading all kinds of materials on body fat. He found there were various methods of measuring it. One uses calipers that pinch subcutaneous fat. It seems simple, but actually making these measurements requires a special technique, or the figures will end up being inconsistent. Another method is to immerse the body completely in water to measure its volume. From the ratio of volume to mass, body fat percentage can be calculated. But this is impossible in most homes. Sato honed in on a different method, one that used electric current. Electrodes are attached to the hands and feet. Fat has more electrical resistance than muscle. A weak current is sent through the body and the electrical resistance measured. The more the flow of electricity is impeded, the higher the ratio of fat in the body. Sato perfected a prototype using this hand and foot method. But measuring this way struck him as too much trouble for a home bathroom scale. Could they find a way to make the measurement just by stepping on the scale? We just went ahead and put that feature into a scale. We made foot electrodes and had them for both feet instead of a hand and a foot. When we took measurements with that, the results were actually very good. All you do is stand on the foot electrodes. Measuring the electrical resistance from the feet up to the lower torso turned out to be a simple approximation for the body fat ratio of the entire body. In 1994, the world's first home scale with built-in body fat measurement went on sale. Later, scales capable of measuring other health indicators besides body fat ratio were produced. They're called body composition meters. Like body fat, all the other indicators are determined by measuring electrical resistance in the body. Calculations are based on the resistance measured from hand to hand or foot to hand. The most important part of creating this body composition meter was figuring out the equations that would turn the raw data into the desired indicators. We had to gather a large amount of data, and then, based on that data, we developed equations we call approximate expressions. Using technology like CT scanning and MRI, data was gathered on visceral fat ratios and skeletal muscle ratios and then this data was compared to electrical resistance data. Sex and age were factored in to generate equations that could calculate an indicator from electrical resistance measurements. You need at least 200 people, possibly as many as 500, which meant thousands in total. It takes about two years to create a single indicator. The body composition meter makes indicators like body fat ratio and BMR immediately accessible, helping people to manage their health. It would not have been possible without a huge effort by countless researchers gathering and analyzing mountains of data. Adjoining the cafeteria here, they have a counseling room 
where customers can come and get their body composition checked and also get advice from a nutritionist. And it's all free, so how could I possibly not give it a try? Please step on the scale. Okay. Okay, okay done. Put them back here. Mm. <laughs> okay, tell me the worst. This is the result. Your weight and body fat percentage are within the normal range. Oh, really? Great! <laughs> now, muscles. See how the right arm is highlighted? It means you have a lot of muscles there. That's because I carry a heavy bag in my right hand all the time, I think. Next, the amount of fat around your organs. It says 11 here, which is a little too high. Do you drink a lot of alcohol? Yes. <laughs> if you eat a lot of carbohydrates, you end up gaining visceral fat. So that's something you want to avoid. Do you see any tendencies um, among the people that you have seen? It seems that many of them are slightly overweight or have a high body fat percentage. So I, after you've given people their initial advice, will they change their dietary habits and then come back to you again after a few months? Yes, sometimes. And we look at the data together and discuss their eating habits. I'll take this with me and maybe I'll come back in a couple of months and see if there's any change as well. All right, uh, let's take a look now at some innovations in bathroom scales using a rather unexpected but very familiar material. Japanese scales have evolved into devices that can measure many health indicators. The next frontier is body balance. At present, to judge balance, you need expensive special equipment that measures a person's center of gravity. But now engineers are looking at the feasibility of using special rubber sheets. As the balance of the body shifts while in contact with the sheet, the areas of greatest pressure show up on the screen. Naoki Tomokio is a physiotherapist. He had the idea of using these sensors to measure the effects of exercise and rehabilitation. It doesn't just measure body weight, it measures body balance. If we use this, problems with posture and balance are revealed. This technology is very effective for preventing various illnesses or detecting them early. So, we have high hopes for its success. Incorporated into a scale, these rubber sensor sheets could quickly and easily measure the body's balance. The scale will become even more useful. These sensors are made of rubber, as are the electrodes printed on them. Since the circuits will not break, even if the sheet is stretched or squashed, it's easy to imagine all sorts of practical applications for them. Laid on the middle of a bed, they can measure respiration and heartbeat, allowing for thorough monitoring of health during sleep. Incorporated into an air mattress, the sheets can constantly monitor the pressure on the body of the sleeper. Research is underway to develop a bed that would use this data to automatically adjust the air pressure in the mattress, thus preventing bed sores. These rubber sensors are also used in nursing robots. The sensor sheets are fitted to the robot's arms, where they detect the pressure on the person the robot is carrying. Research is underway to refine the movement of the robot with the aim of improving the safety and comfort of the patient. Scales are also venturing into space. How do you measure weight in a zero-gravity environment? At Gumma University, researchers are using rubber bands. A room full of strange looking equipment. 
This is Professor Yusaku Fuji. He's developing a scale to be used in space. Scales on Earth are all measuring g-force, the acceleration imparted to mass by the Earth pulling down on it. But in a space station, in zero gravity, to measure mass you need to apply an accelerating force artificially. To create that acceleration, Fuji is using rubber bands. Our idea is to use these rubber bands to pull the astronauts. The lighter the astronaut, the more they will be accelerated by a pulling force. The pull of the rubber bands is measured precisely by this force sensor. The moment-by-moment -moment acceleration is precisely measured using a laser interferometer. We measure force and acceleration, and mass, by definition, is simply force divided by acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. If you know force and acceleration, you can calculate mass, or in other words, weight as measured on Earth. This is footage from 2009 of astronaut Koichi Wakata actually using a rubber cord in space. Having a simple and accurate way to measure body weight in zero gravity would enable even someone in space to keep an eye on their health. Work goes on to make a scale that will perform this role. The way things are going, in the near future you'll probably be able to step onto a set of Japanese scales and glean about as much information as you could from going to your doctors for a checkup. Interestingly, the shop assistant that I spoke to earlier said that the majority of foreign visitors to Japan are happy to know just how much they weigh. But those state-of-the-art scales are selling like hotcakes to Japanese people who evidently want to know on a daily basis the minute details of their health in relation to the people around them and to society in general. It's probably a fairly accurate indication of the Japanese psyche. I'll see you again next time. Next time, Enka. Often called the Blues of Japan, Enka is based on a pentatonic scale and features unique vocal ornamentation. We'll see why it resonates so deeply with the Japanese.